Welcome again, dear friends. I trust that God has been speaking personally to you and the messages of God through these Sabbath hours are enlightening your heart with heavenly light. And I pray, friends, that in the power, the might, and the satisfaction of Jesus, you will press forward with a heart renewed with heavenly hope. Friends, yesterday we reflected on how Zephaniah bids us to recognize that the day of the Lord is near, is near. And today in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12, listen to the words, 2 Peter 3, 12, saying, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Friends, the Bible says we are not just to look for, but we are to hasten the coming of the day of God. The day Peter says, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Friends, we are invited to not just sit back in anticipation, but to be involved in hastening the coming of the day of God. The prophet tells us we can hasten the coming of Jesus by giving the gospel to the world. And so, friends, I invite thee afresh. Let us be involved as God asks us to step forth into a world that is plagued with darkness, that we would bring forth Jesus, the balm of Gilead, to wounded hearts, to broken lives, to torn down families, that Jesus will prepare a people for the great eternity he has in store for us. I pray, friends, that you would spend the rest of this Sabbath looking unto Jesus and hastening the coming of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you again. What a precious privilege is ours to one more time be afforded the presence of the Almighty. Thank you, God, for what you seek to do in our midst. Thank you for the words you've been feeding us with, the words of hope, life, comfort, and assurance. And we pray, God, that as we tread forward, may you help us to move forward on our knees, not relying or leaning on self, but leaning only on Jesus. For God, looking at ourselves, we see discouragement. But looking unto you, we see hope everlasting. Thank you. Thank you for what you seek to accomplish today. We pray, God, that the truths we receive, may we feed on them and feed the world around us with these precious words we will live upon, that the world will know the Lord who lives and loves. We thank you, O oh God, for what you're about to share with us. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would please engrave these truths upon our heart. By God, these are not just intellectual truths, but experiential truths the world sees lived out in principle in our life. Thank you, O oh dear God. Thank you for what you are longing to do and for the work you will accomplish today. We praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon he draweth nigh. i pray and watch and rest. So at midnight comes the cry. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Go meet him as he cometh with hallelujahs clear. The marriage feast is waiting. The gates wide open stand Up, up your hairs of glory 
the bridegroom is at hand. You saints who hear in patience your cross and sufferings bore, shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. Upon the throne of glory, the Lamb you shall behold. In triumph cast before Him, you diadems of gold. Our hope and expectation, O Jesus, now appear. Arise, O Son, so longed for, o'er this benighted sphere. With hearts and hands uplifted, we plead, O Lord, to see the day of earth's redemption that brings us unto Thee. Good morning, church, and a very happy Sabbath to you all. I hope you all had a wonderful week and now find it a privilege on this beautiful Sabbath day to come before the presence of our Lord God Almighty online, though, to worship Him, to praise Him, and to be blessed by His Word. It is my privilege to speak to you all this morning after a very long gap. I had been busy traveling for my ministry in different parts of India. As we continue our journey on this earth, friends, may the good Lord continue to influence each one of our lives and lead us and guide us in the path everlasting. We are living at a very crucial time of this world's history. We need to know that we ought to order our lives now before it is too late. As we approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is not far from now, there is a great, there is a need for a great searching in our own lives first, so that we would be prepared for eternal life, which God has promised his people. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, he says, examine whether you are in the faith. That means Paul was trying to remind the believers that we need to really search our hearts to find out really we not only just believe God, but are we really following him or not in our thoughts, in our words, in our action, in our obedience, etc. And so, my dear friends, as we uh, come together on this beautiful Sabbath morning, to listen to God's word, let us uh, honestly pray for our own salvation first and then for the salvation of our family members and then our loved ones and friends, our neighbors. We need to really uh, go through this process if we really have to enter the kingdom of heaven. Every trace of sin, every trace of disobedience, every trace of unfaithfulness, every trace of attitude exactly, and other things that are not in harmony with God's word. Remember, it needs to be dealt with and we need to fall in line with God's word. With this thought, I would like to warmly welcome each and every one of you all this morning and in Christ's name. And I pray that God will continue to lead you all and guide you all in the days ahead. The topic this morning that I've chosen is Jesus or another Jesus. While we all believe in that one Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus who came 2000 years back, the Jesus who created this world and the Jesus who's coming back again. While we all believe in that one Jesus, is there any possibility for us to follow another Jesus, knowingly or unknowingly? 
That's why I've chosen this topic because sometimes we think we believe in the true Jesus. We follow what the Bible says, but is our life really in harmony with what Jesus is telling us, what the word of God is telling us? Because if not, we are definitely following another Jesus. The reason I chose this topic is many other Jesuses are there also in the world. And probably uh, uh, to some, another Jesus is there in their lives. But what is more worrying is, is that another Jesus that has slowly crept into the lives of many of God's professed people and who are called the children of God. But the greater reason I chose this topic is because if we truly don't follow or sincerely and faithfully don't follow what Jesus says in his word or what the scripture says, remember, we may be unknowingly or unknowingly or silently following another Jesus. Jesus also clearly said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, if uh, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Either you follow uh, love one and follow him or you follow the other. And in Matthew 12 verse 30, he says, if you are not with me, that means if you are not listening to what I am saying, if you are not following whatever I have spoken to you, remember you are against me. You are, in other words, you are on the other side. And so, my dear friends, this is a very important message for every Christian, including Seventh-day Adventist. You see, based on this topic, we see one impo uh, important uh, passage here given in Matthew chapter 7, which we all know very well. It says here in verse 21 onwards, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth. That means act, okay, do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Uh, verse 22 says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23 says, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me he that worketh iniquity. Now, these are all not just ordinary Christians. They're all so-called spiritual leaders in the Christendom, in the Christendom, who claim to be the true preachers and healers. But at the end of the day, many of them or most of them will be cast out. Why? If they truly believed in the true Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, if they really followed what Jesus said, would they be cast out? Obviously, they followed another Jesus. Or if I have to put it in simple words, the followed the enemy. They were able to perform many things through another power. They had another spirit controlling them. Let's read this passage. Why actually they were cast out? You see, as we study in the, in the meaning of this word, this here, the word iniquity in verse 20, uh, 23, the last word, the reason why they will be cast out is, if you see here, in this uh, my sword Bible, where we get the Greek meaning of that word iniquity is the one who breaks the law. That means these people, while they believed in Jesus Christ, they had no regards for the law. They just either uh, said we don't have to follow the law or they probably they knew and yet they broke the law. That is the Ten Commandments. They claimed to follow Jesus, but they lived in disobedience to the law or to the commandments. Now, let's see what Paul had to say about this another Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, he says here, For if he that cometh 
preacher another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye received another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might bear well with him. In other words, in simple words, Paul was telling here, I hope you have not received another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. If you have not received these three, you are doing well spiritually. Do you know, my dear friends, that there are chances of we having another Jesus in our lives or another uh, gospel in our life or another um, spirit in our lives? Let me tell you one thing. If you have another Jesus, the other two will follow. Either another spirit and another gospel. Or if you have another gospel, you will have another Jesus, another spirit. All these are interconnected. You get one which is wrong, you will get other two free. That is why we need to be very careful in our spiritual journey, my dear friends. We know Satan is a very cunning person. He has 6,000 years of experience as to how he deceive, how to deceive the people of the world. And you and I need to really pray a lot and study the word of God diligently. And today we have even the spirit of prophecy to help us to uh, understand the word of God more better. And let us not take our Christian life for granted. Our Christian life is not an ordinary life. It has to be a life of spirituality too. You need to be praying earnestly and studying the word of God diligently every day. Remember, all these three, another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel is there in the Christian world. Jesus already warned us 2,000 years back that there will be false Christ and false prophets. Matthew 24, verse 24, he says, For they shall arise, false Christ and false prophets, and show great signs and wonders in so much. That means it possible that if it were possible that they shall, uh, they shall deceive the very elect. The very people who claim to know the truth, who know, claim to follow Jesus, they also could be deceived if they don't really uh, study the word of God diligently and if they don't spend a lot of time in prayer asking God to lead them and guide them. It's because these people, uh, Satan will use these false Christ and false prophets uh, through many signs and wonders, miracles and healings and all these things so that even some people who uh, claim to know the word of God and claim to know the truth could also be deceived. And this is a warning given much ahead of time. That's what we see here. How did all these things happen? You see, right in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, God clearly told Adam what they are, uh, what they are supposed to do, and what they are not supposed to do. What they are supposed to eat, and what they are not supposed to eat. In Genesis two verses sixteen and seventeen, it says, "And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it." For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. But what did Satan do? He came along and spoke to Mother Eve and gave another message. Contrary to what God said. You see, my dear friends, always remember one thing. When we don't follow what God says you will slowly end up hearing another message. And when you hear another message, you follow it, you will have another Jesus coming into your life, another spirit controlling your lives. That is why the word of God should be an, a standard for everything that we believe and practice. 
and if we are ignorant of god's word remember there is a great danger my dear friends god has already told in hosea 4 verse 6 he says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because when we read god's word we will know what is right what is wrong what to believe what not to believe what to do what not to do where to go where not to go but if we are ignorant of god's word if we don't really have the desire to study god's word remember my dear friends we could be deceived and finally be lost and see so what do we see here mother eve disobeyed god and then adam disobeyed god and finally we see the whole humanity was cast out they were sent out along with them whole humanity was sent out of god's presence out of the garden of eden today the same thing is happening in the christian world today god is telling one thing but we are following another thing the world today is suffering including the christian world is suffering why when god has promised us blessings when god has promised to lead us and guide us and help us and uh, all these things why uh, why is they still suffering in this world obviously something is wrong with us we need to examine our lives my dear friends and find out whether we are really following god or not galatians chapter 1 verses 6 and 2 8 paul says i marvel i am surprised that he are soon that he are so soon removed from him that has called you into the grace of christ unto uh, another gospel you see during the time of paul itself there was another gospel preaching in and he was surprised because when another gospel comes in you will definitely have another jesus another spirit also controlling your lives verse 7 says which is not another but there is some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of christ but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you other than which we have preached unto you let him be accursed let him be separated that is why our christian beliefs and practices should not be dependent on somebody else's preaching or teaching yes it is nice to hear the message but we need to ourselves study the word of god diligently every day in our lives this should be our daily homework every morning and evening learning understanding and following whatever is written in god's word isaiah 4 verse 1 says and in that day seven women will take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread we will eat whatever we want to eat we will wear whatever we want to wear only let us be called by your name lord in other words to take away our reproach you see today the same thing yes lord we believe in you we we believe in your name but leave us alone we will do what we will live how we want to live you see my dear friends there is so much of dangers in our spiritual life and sometimes we are not even aware of it we are thinking all is well while all really is not well john chapter 18 verse 37 pilate therefore said unto him are thou the ki- a king then jesus answered thou sayest that i am a king to this end i was born and for this cause i came into the world that i should bear witness for the truth you see as much as the fight is going on between christ and satan don't forget there is uh, the war is also continuing between truth and error if you don't follow the truth remember automatically you are following you will end up following error you may if you don't believe not only just believe if you don't even follow you will end up following error and end up following another jesus in your life remember in this world there is true god and false god gods true christ and false christ true spirit and false spirits true preachers and false preachers true prophets 
and false prophets, true pastors and false pastors, true worship and false worship, true men of God and true uh, false men, uh, men of God, uh, true miracles and false miracles, true worship and false worship, true gospel and false gospel, true ministers and false ministers, true the true coming of Christ and the false coming of Christ. You know, there are so many things uh, that uh, which is true in the Bible, there is a counterfeit also going on. And unless you and I diligently study the word of God every day personally, my dear friends, we will be deceived. We will end up following another Jesus Christ unknowingly or silently. These are all dangers to our spiritual faith, which we must uh, watch out. You know, <laughs> Revelation 13 verses 13 and 14 it says about how Satan, through people, you know, he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come from down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by these by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which they uh, which had the uh, the wound by a sword and did live. You see, Satan will perform a lot of miracles and many a times using people, the so-called ministers of Christ to deceive the whole world. That's why we need to be watching out, my dear friends. Jesus already warned in Matthew 22 verse 14. He said, many are called, but few will be chosen. What does it mean? Why only few will be chosen? Because it is only a few who will live a sacrificial Christian life, who will really be obedient to the word of God, who will really live the life that Christ wants us to live. Many only believe and claim to follow. Even they know the truth, but in reality, the life, most of it is the opposite of what the gospel is saying. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 15 and six, uh, 16, it says, But he, as he that which, which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That means let our words be you know, such that people should not see that uh, there is uh, wrong things in our thoughts, in our minds. That our conscience is pure and clean. Verse 16 says, Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And Hebrews 12 verse 14 says, Follow peace with all men, with everyone. And holiness, that means live a holy life, without which no man shall see the Lord. In the book, Counsels to Writers and Editors, chapter 21, in one passage there, it says, Christ has given many warnings to the effect that false doctrines, false prophets, and false Christ would arise and deceive many. Great delusions will arise, and even of your own selves that will arise, speaking per, men speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Even Satan will disguise himself and appear as Christ. You see, my dear friends, enough of warnings are given in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy about the dangers that can come into our Christian life. And thus, we may think all is well. We are tr truly following the true Jesus Christ, but uh, silently following another Jesus. Matthew 15 verse 9, Jesus that time itself told the believers, but in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. And Matthew 5 verse 48, Jesus says here, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly, uh, sorry, as your father, which is in heaven is perfect. You see today, what is the message that is going on? We can never be perfect. You see, my dear friend, Jesus will not tell us to do something that is impossible. Yes, on our own strength, it is not possible for us to be perfect. 
or to have a perfect Christian life. But with divine help, if we really ask the Lord and say, Lord, I want to live that perfect life which you want me to live, God will help us so that we could live that life that God wants us to live. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5, it says here, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the books of life, book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now, if you see Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, to the seven churches, all the seven churches, Jesus has one common message. The first thing he says, I know your works to all the churches. That means I know actually who you are. And then the second important message he says, to him that overcometh, to everyone who believes on his name, need to overcome. God knows, Jesus knows that we all have not only sinned, we all have our shortcomings. We all have some weakness or the other. And here is a reminder given to all of us that we need to overcome our sins, our weaknesses, our uh, uh, the wrong attitude or wrong behavior or our disobedience or whatever. You know, we all are weak in some way or the other, but it is high time for us to realize our own condition. If we don't Take steps now, my dear friends, to rectify our spiritual life. Remember, it will be too late tomorrow. That's why the Bible always clearly says in Hebrews, I think, chapter 3, he says, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Overcoming by God's strength is possible. Jesus, during his time itself, said, in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You see, Jesus that time himself saw people who called him Lord, Lord. But in reality, they were not really following him. They just wanted Jesus for their own purpose. For their own benefits. But they really, from their heart, they had no mind to follow Jesus. If we see the four gospel messages, my dear friends, we see how Jesus is telling every Christian what type of life they ought to be. You see the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Jesus is clearly telling what type of life that we, you and I should live. John 17, verse 3, Jesus says, and this is life eternal. Or in simple words, this is how you will get eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. What is Jesus trying to say here? Get to know God. Get to know Jesus now before it is too late. Because our eternal life is connected in you and me knowing who Jesus is, knowing who God is. And to know God, we need to diligently study the word of God every day. Sister White says here in Maranatha, page, 30, uh, page 34, paragraph 3, he says, The advent of Christ will surprise the false teachers. They are saying peace and safety like the priest and the teachers before the fall of Jerusalem. They look for the church to enjoy earthly prosperity and glory. You see, what happened in the history is going to repeat again. Many of these false teachers, false preachers, false prophets, you know, will be surprised as to 
what how they conducted their lives how they conducted their spiritual lives how they uh, uh, they gave the false messages to the people they'll be totally surprised acts 20 verse 29 to 30 paul already said during his time he says for i know this that after my departure departing shall grievous wolves grievous wolves are who these false prophets and false teachers and false preachers and all these people these grievous wolves shall enter in among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them not only in the christian world but even in the church of god we will find people who come with different doctrines different messages ultimately diverting them from the true gospel again let me tell you when you divert yourself from the true gospel or from the true message you will end up following another jesus second corinthians 11 verses 13 to 15 paul says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ you know such will be the deception that these people will look as though they have been sent by god himself or by christ himself and further he says and don't and no marvel that means don't be surprised for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his that is satan's ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works you see that means what do we see here satan also has a group of preachers and teachers and false uh, pastors and all these people who will work on behalf of satan and you see my dear friend that's why when it comes to the reading and understanding of god's word remember we need to pray a lot so that we will uh, really know what is the true message that we need to believe and to follow because false christ and false prophets and all these uh, false teachers and preachers will come into the church of god also and there is already that is happening even till today within our own church where people come with a different message and thus uh, deviating the flock from the truth there are so many things that are coming uh, which i cannot tell you right now first kings chapter 18 verses 20 and 21 and so ahab sent unto all the children of israel and gathered the prophets together unto mount carmel and elijah came unto the people and said how long halt ye between two opinions that means how long will you be in two opinions if the lord be god you follow him if you feel but if baal then follow him in other words if you feel that baal is your god then you follow baal and the people answered him not a word you know what a sad thing instead of saying uh, elijah sorry we had been following baal we want to follow the god of heaven they did not open the mouth and say because they were so stuck with the false god <coughs> excuse me matthew chapter 12 verse 30 jesus clearly says he that is not with me is against me he that gathereth not scattereth abroad what did jesus mean by this if you are not following or Uh, you yeah, are following whatever i am telling you to do remember you are not with me you are on the enemy side in other words so that's why my dear friends just believing the truth is not enough today i am so sorry to say while we believe in the sabbath truth 
we wholeheartedly believe in the sub truth we may not even go to work or school or college or uh, answer exams or uh, uh, go for an interview on the sabbath day but we need to ask ourselves are we keeping the 24 hours sabbath holy what are we speaking on that day what are we doing on that day we need to examine ourselves my dear friends if we are not really with the word of god you will be uh, having another gospel very soon thinking all is well well all is not well second corinthians 11 verses 14 and 15 <clears throat> as i come to the cl close of my message let me read this passage and here paul says and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light and therefore it is no a great thing that his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works this is the passage that i already read satan is really working hard to deceive god's people we may be thinking we are really following the true jesus but in reality it could be we are following another jesus silently or unknowingly or probably i would say even knowingly it's high time my dear friends that we really examine ourselves much uh, more before looking at others let me look at my own self let us look at our own selves first am i really in harmony with god in spirit and in truth you see one wrong thing can put us out of the kingdom of heaven let me tell you something as i come to a close of my message to the close of my message it is not necessary just to believe another jesus or another doctrine that will keep us away from following the true jesus our very thoughts our actions our behavior our attitude if it is not christ like is enough to put us out of the kingdom of heaven we already know those who are seven day adventist we know that sister white clearly says if there is something that we can take from earth to heaven is the character of christ in our lives if this character is not in us remember we are heading somewhere else we are following another jesus let me tell you an uh, incident that happened about a month back as i was traveling uh, getting ready to travel to assam i was invited for a program there i noticed that this laptop of mine has been somehow slowing down you know i could see uh, day after day you know it is slowing down that means to open before it is to just take uh, a minute or two and i would be ready to read or do something on my laptop but as time progressed you know it was getting more and more slow it was taking 3 minutes then 4 minutes 5 minutes and 7 minutes 8 minutes to open and same thing also to shut down and now i had just hardly two days more left to travel to assam and now i was so much worried because sometimes even uh, uh, not only with this problem of uh, being slow uh, in opening and closing suddenly it will even shut down so i was just so much worried as to what to do i called one of my friends who has quite good knowledge of the computer then he said probably you need to um format your computer then i realized if i had to format the computer i have uh, you know i may lose some data one side on the other side to reinstall certain uh, programs that uh, i have here on my laptop will take time and by the time the computer really settles down uh, the laptop really settles down it will take few more days and then i was really wondering and i was praying what to do 
and suddenly something spoke to me i believe it is the holy spirit that spoke to me and said remove one file from the computer and it was one anti virus file or folder which already expired some time back and lo and behold with the help of my nephew i um removed that uh, file and uh, after some time i started the the laptop again and lo and behold it came back to normal you see my dear friends that one file was controlling more than 1000 files that i had in the computer in my laptop and finally it was even controlling me who is outside the laptop controlling my emotion because i was now really getting desperate and worried you see that one folder or that one file that was controlling the whole laptop was controlling all the other files my dear friends why did i say this story it could be there is one thing that is wrong in our lives that is controlling our entire spiritual life it may be something in the open or in the secret we need to honestly pray and as this uh, the picture here to be like jesus is something that you and i need to be before the time is too late may god bless each one of us as we progress in our christian journey let us daily pray for the holy spirit to be part and parcel of our daily lives we know that today we have been reminded that if we don't follow the true jesus in spirit and in truth we would end up following another jesus may god help us all in our physical life and in our spiritual in in our spiritual life too and so that our calling and election will be sure may you all have a blessed sabbath and may the lord continue to lead and guide you all and in the days use each one of us in a mighty way so that through our lives through our influence through our uh, preaching we will see not hundreds but thousands of people one day being part and parcel of god's eternal kingdom god bless you all happy sabbath Christian, seek not yet repose. Cast thy dreams of fears away. Thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. Gird thy heavenly armor round. Wear it ever night and day. Ambush lies the evil one. Watch and pray. Hear the victors who all came. Still they mark each warrior's way. All with one sweet voice exclaim. Watch and pray. If on that alone hung the issue.
issue of the day. Pray that help may be sent down. Watch and pray. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, what a wonderful opportunity for us, Lord, not only to come before your presence to worship you, to praise you and to thank you, but also to listen to your word. We know that your word has been given to us not only to know who you are and what you are to each one of us, but also to guide us in the path that will ultimately take us to the kingdom of heaven. This morning, we were reminded about another Jesus that has crept into the life of many of God's people, knowingly or unknowingly. And I pray, Father, that we, we would make up our minds to sincerely, faithfully, and obediently follow the true Jesus in letter and in spirit, Lord. Lead us and guide us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that we will truly be your representatives here on this earth and be a shining light in this dark world. And above all, Lord, preparing ourselves for what is soon going to come, and above all, to stand before the Son of Man in peace, Lord. Lord, once again, I would like to commit our lives into your hands, lead us, guide us, and help us, both in our physical and in our Christian journey. And also I pray for the final herald ministry also, that you will bless Sister Ruth and Brother Godwin, and that you will continue to use them for the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 